What's up, everybody? Uh, good evening. It's good to see you guys tonight. Uh, for those of you who are in the Houston area, man, it is cold. It's cold outside. I haven't been out there since I got out of work earlier today. Man, I got off early and it was, man, it was cold. It's crazy. I know some people are dealing with the flu. Some TGMites are sick with the flu. I want to just, you know, man, I'm praying for y'all and I hope y'all get better. Take your medicine. <laughs> Don't go trying to quote scriptures and putting the Bible on your chest and all that. No, take some medicine, okay? Uh, uh, man, once again, it's great to see y'all. I have, I'm having some difficulties on, uh, on my Facebook, but uh, hopefully it gets to, it gets to run. I don't know what's going on with my live feed. But uh, hopefully it comes on. But if not, we're just going to roll right into it. I hope you guys have been good, man. It's good to see you. What's up, bro? I haven't seen you in a minute. I was meaning to hit you up uh, the other the other, uh, the other other day, Brian. But it's good to see you. I'm, I am going to hit you up when we get offline, man. I haven't talked to you in a minute. It's good to see you watching. Um, but anyway, for a uh, good evening, my uh, TGM television crew on YouTube, my Facebook Live crew, and uh, my Instagram crew. I really don't know what's going on. Uh, but it's okay, man. We're just going to roll right into it. Uh, tonight, we're talking about uh, self-control. Uh, how much control do you have uh, over yourself? And I think it's a very uh, important subject because uh, a lot of times I think we forfeit the things that God wants to do in our lives simply because we don't have enough control or discipline either to get us there or to control our discipline to keep us there. And so uh, tonight, I think it's very important um, that we can uh, learn to control ourselves. And I don't think this is something that we learn at a young enough age. And that's why it's important. And I say discipline to my kids a lot. And I don't want you to take it as whoopings, but I want you to take it as training and, and being being able to consistently do something that is productive for your life as opposed to uh, 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 not doing anything or being unproductive. So uh, as we wait for our Facebook Live crew to come on, uh, for those of you on TGM Television, guys, thank y'all for watching last week. Uh, we got a, a lot of good feedback and a lot of good reporting. What I, what I do, I'm Minister Marcus. What I do is I try to encourage people who are walking with God, uh, I try to give you tips, biblical tips to help Help enhance your life to help you see your uh, problems different and give you a different perspective. And uh, hopefully tonight, you know, I can do pretty much the same thing. I, I really don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to start up anyway. All right. So uh, tonight our lesson is coming from First Corinthians chapter nine, verse number 24 through 27. And I'm going to read it. Uh, starting at verse 24, I'm reading out of the King, I mean, not the King James, the New Living Translation. Uh, this is a life application study Bible for those of you who do want to learn to start reading the Bible or get something from the Bible. I do recommend that you try the life application. Uh, um, it's coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 24. Uh, I'm going to start reading it. Give me one second. Um, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. All right. Hopefully you guys are still on. <laughs> I'm getting some people are getting some feedback on my Facebook. I don't know what's going on with it, guys. I really just don't know. Uh, give me one second. Just a second. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go live. It's just really, it's really not, not cooperating tonight. Um, but uh, nevertheless, man, we just going to go ahead and go um, first. Cor oh, there it goes. OK, well, we've been on for a little while, but uh, we coming from first Corinthians chapter nine, verse number 24 through 27. It says, remember that in the race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. You also must run in such a way that you will win. All athletes practice strict self-control. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I went straight to the goal with purpose in every step. I am not like a boxer who misses his punches. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. All right. And so tonight we're talking about self-control. And my question to you tonight is, 
Do you think that you have self-control? Do you think you have control over yourself? For a long time, I thought I had really good self-control until it got to the point where I got real angry, right? Or, or uh, you know, if I really got, if I got real horny, right? Uh, if I got real hungry, uh, controlling those natural appetites, um, those emotion inclin emotional inclinations that come, uh, those triggers, right? Uh, 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 I thought I had really good self control until something was triggered, and uh, for most of us, it's the same way. But the thing of it is, is that for some of us, we have a uh, 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 lighter triggers than other people, right? And so, and so tonight, hopefully, we can uh, kind of uh, open up the uh, the lesson. I'm gonna be talking about it for the next couple weeks. Hopefully, I can get through a lot of it, a chunk of it tonight, so I can come back next week and just deal with the things I really want to deal with. But I always like to start off with the portion of the Bible that is in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 24. For those of you who are just tuning on, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a book in Corinth. The uh, church that he started on his second missionary journey, what Paul did is he would he would travel around the world um, and the, he started up churches. And so this church at Corinth, it was a, a strategic location because uh, think of it as an airport. Think of it as a an, as a place like an airport. You have people coming. You have people going. Some people were coming for business. Some people were going for pleasure. Some people they were coming and going for a lot of different things, right? And so and so what Paul did is he he establishes a church because the advantage of having a church at a place like that is that the word the gospel of Jesus Christ would be able to be spread to a lot of different locations from one location. So it was very advantageous. For him to go and set up a church at Corinth strategically, it was advantageous. But the thing about the Corinth is that Corinth was known, right, for their promiscuity. And what that means is that the people, they worship the goddess Aphrodite. And she was all about sexual lusts and pleasure. You know, uh, if I could just be real, kind of like how the world is now. You know, like, man, you know, it's a lot of people that, we, you know, we say we Christian. It was just... It's just the thing of it was, is that it was just real prevalent, very prevalent at that time. You know, it was <laughs> lust was very prevalent at that time. A lot of us, we call ourselves Christian uh, until it's time to control the lust. You know, Lord, pray for me <laughs> until it's time to control uh, the lust. And so and so the church at Corinth, they were it was very advantageous, but it was also disadvantageous. Right. Because. In order for them to uh, enjoy the benefits, uh, uh, the advantages of being at Corinth, they had to be able to overcome its disadvantages. And I want to stress that, right? I think all of our blessings are dependent on whether or not we are disciplined enough Right. To enjoy our advantages as opposed to being taken down by our disadvantages. And so let me say let me say it like this. Uh, 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 look at David, how long it took God to get David to the spot of being the king. And even though David did rule well, uh, it was an advantageous for him in his life. But it became disadvantageous when he could not control himself when he saw Bathsheba. And so my question is, can you stand to be I think sometimes God doesn't elevate us when we feel like we should be elevated because we lack the discipline necessary to maintain. There was a portion of period in my life, right, where I was really praying and I was asking, I was seeking God to increase my finances, right? I need more money. I need more money. And, and, and I did realize that some of the habits that I was carrying on in, right, some of the habits that I had prevented God from giving me more because if he would have given me more, all I would have done was spent my more on what I was spending it on, right? So I was, I, back then I was drinking a lot, right? And so God was saying to me, I want to give you more, but if I give you more, you're going to be more of a destruction to yourself, right? Than a production to yourself. And back then I couldn't get it, right? And so the church here at Corinthians, rent. Now they have, they can, they can experience the advantages if they're not overcome by their disadvantages. And so the main message, message at the end of the ninth chapter is all about the ability to control oneself while operating in your purpose. What if I was to tell you 
that God has you where you are right now to kill something inside of you that that you that to kill something on the inside that doesn't kill your success on the outside when you get up the road. What if I told you right now that God was teaching you right to control yourself so that when you do get to where he wants to take you, that you don't allow your flesh right to mess it up. And so the question tonight is, do you have the ability to control yourself? Do you have the ability to control yourself? I believe that the problem with many Christians is our inability to control ourselves. Everybody filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody's spiritual. Everybody can speak in tongue until it's time to control your mouth, right? Until it's time to control your attitude. Until it's time. Look, even for us, that you know, I had a person come up to me and they told me, right, that that uh, that that um. Certain sins were wrong. And so they were real big on the whole lust thing. And my, my response to them was, you know, God don't call us to judge. But at the same time, my brother, you a little bit overweight. You know what I'm saying? And so being greedy or overeating is also a sin, too. And that's what I'm saying. Everybody is saved. Everybody is spiritual until it's time to control yourself, until it's time to control your eating habits, until it's time to control your sexual habits, until it's time to control your attitude, right? Until it's time to stop being greedy. Until it's time to stop being selfish. Everybody is wholly filled with the spirit and running around the church and dancing, right? But nobody is spiritual when it's time to control their flesh. And I want to stress on that tonight because a lot of times we put emphasis on what God would have us to do at church. The Holy Spirit came on me and I felt something that made me shout, right? But did the same Holy Spirit come on you while you was at home, right? And stop you from doing something. Come on, I want y'all to go with me tonight. And look, out your name, man. We're going to talk about some difficult things tonight, but it's okay. It's okay. Okay. And so, and so my, my question is, have you allowed your body, right, to be in control of your life? Have you allowed your lusts to be in control of your life? Have you allowed your selfishness to be con in control of your life? Whatever you want right now, have you allowed that to be in control of your life? And the problem is, is that we allow our body to be instantly gratified to the point to where it cannot be controlled. We don't have to have everything we want right when we want it. I had to learn this. Look, and I'm 34. I'm about to be 35 this year. But I had to learn that the body is not meant to be in control of my behavior. I'm going to say that. I want y'all to say this. Say, I want you to say this. Say, my body is not meant to be in control of my behavior. I want. I had to learn that. And some of us still learning it the hard way. That your body will lead you to some, ooh, some weird places, right? Your in, intentions may be good, but your emotions, right? Your, come on. I want, I, want, I want to talk to real people tonight. Your body is is not meant to be in control of your behavior. And, and, I, and I want to tell somebody, the reality is, is that no matter how much you know what, what is right to do, your body is always going to want to do the opposite thing. No matter how much you want to be productive, your body will almost always want to do things that are opposite. I said that I was going to practice my base every single day, right? But then when you get home from school or when you get home from work, your body just don't feel like, come on, if I could just talk to real people, right? Sometimes when you want to be productive, your body is, the, is working completely against what it is that you want to accomplish. Your body will want things and not just that, but here's the thing. Your body will want things that are contrary to God, that are contrary to your forward progress, and that are contrary to your future happiness. And the thing is, and what I want to stress is, if you want to be successful at accomplishing anything, you have to learn to control yourself. Come on, say this. Say, I got to control myself. The concept is called delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. That is a tough concept, especially when you're used to getting what you want when you want it, right? 
It's difficult to tell your body no. But I had to learn this. You know, I had to get in the gym last year and I'm still working it out. But at the end of the day, right, the only way that I could start losing my waist, losing my stomach, bringing my waistline in is that I had to learn you can't eat chocolate whenever you want chocolate. You can't eat cookies whenever you want to eat cookies. And I hope that's a word for somebody tonight. If you want to see yourself in the future being successful, you are going to have to control yourself in the present. I wish I could have told my 15 year old self, right? That if you want to be successful in the future, you have to control yourself now. For my young man, hey, bro, that you watching on Instagram, I see you. Look, check it out. If you want to be successful in your 20s, you have to learn self-control in your teenage years. Because if you don't, in your 20s, you will see the effects of the choices you made when you were a teenager. And I wish, I hope somebody can identify and testify along with me that the stuff I did when I was 15 I didn't see the real effects of that until I got in my 20s the stuff that I was doing in my 20s I didn't see the real effects of that until I got in my 30s and then I had to learn in the latter part of my 20s that if I wanted my 30s to be different than my 20s I was going to have to control myself delay my gratification so I could see the things that I wanted to see not in my present right but in my future and sometimes we don't get the concept that that if, if I want to see future success I have to win the present battles and I want to stress that if you want to see future success you have to win the present battles and so the question becomes is it possible to actually control your flesh that I believe that it is but the first step towards self-control is recognizing the actual enemy you know in our churches we are taught that the devil is our enemy right the devil is our enemy the white man is our enemy right brothers and people who are standing up against you is our enemy I learned this that the devil is not the biggest enemy that I have to fight. People on the outside are not the big. My boss is not the biggest enemy that I have. The white man, the white man, the black man, whoever, they are not the biggest enemy that I have to fight. The biggest obstacle to my forward progress is me. And if you look at yourself in the mirror, truth be told, there is nobody on the outside can hinder you like you. And I say it like this. My biggest enemy is my inner me. It is not those people on the outside that is stopping me from doing the things that I want to do. It's the man I live with every day. It's the man that I see in the mirror every morning. It's the man that I clean off and I dress every day. It's him. And I had to learn this, that the devil cannot entice you with something that you do not want. Most of the time, it's a temptation, not because the devil wants you to have it, but because you want it. <laughs> <laughs> and the truth is, the truth of the matter is, is that you can lock everybody on the outside. You can keep everybody out. You can stay in the house all day and you will discover that you are your own worst enemy. And so first, we have to realize and recognize that the biggest enemy is my inner me. The biggest issue is our own will and our own desires. It's not the devil that lures us into sin. It's our flesh. And here's how the devil works. The devil works along with your flesh. He knows what you like, right? He knows what you want. And so then he only entices, he puts thoughts in your mind that's going to pull your flesh a certain way. And oftentimes it's not just the devil, but it's my flesh. It's me. And the, the thing is, is that we don't have the discipline or the self-control to tell our flesh, no. <laughs> Come on, say that. No. Can I have some cookies tonight? I want to go get me some chocolate. No. Can I eat some fried chicken? No. I cannot have the things that I want right now because they are detrimental to where I'm trying to go and what I'm trying to accomplish. No. Do I need to get more in? You know, do I need to get more into my work? Yes. But the thing is, right? The thing is, is that we don't know how to tell our flesh, no. <laughs> no, you can't do that. No, you can't have that. Yes, you need to get up and go to the gym. No, you can't eat that. Yes, you need to eat better. Yes, you need to exercise. No, you can't sleep all day. No, you can't be lazy. You have to be productive. We don't have the discipline to tell our flesh, 
No. We don't have the willpower to resist the urges. I want to tell you tonight, it's difficult, but it's possible. Say that. It's difficult, but it's possible. It's simple, but it's not easy. <laughs> it's simple, but it's not easy. Paul gives a simple outlook as to the way we bring our bodies under subjection. And what he uses is he uses an athlete. He uses an athlete. And what he does is he illustrates how we are to control ourselves by, by how athletes control themselves. And I want you to get that, that for our athletes, all those football players, they have to train. They have to lift weights. They have to condition their bodies to play the sport. And Paul uses the athlete to give us an illustration as to how one to control should control their body. All right, so I need to do this. Let me ask you a question. If I told you that I would give you $100 for every 10 pounds you lose, would you be able to do it? I give you $100 for every 10 pounds you lose. Would you be able to do it? And I'm going to give you a chance to think about that. A hundred dollars for every 10 pounds you lose. Would that make you start going to the gym? Would that make you get more disciplined and dedicated to your weight loss? Would that help you to be more? Come on. I'm asking you a question, right? If I told you I would give you a hundred dollars for every 10 pounds you lose, would you be able to do it? Then the next question, how would you be able to do it? How? You would discipline, you would train, you would, whatever it is that you had to do to get down that 10 pounds for every 10 pounds you lose, I'm going to give you a hundred. You would. Yeah, I know you would because I would. But here's the thing. The thing is, what does those changes have to do with the Holy Spirit? I, I'm, I'll, I'll wait. Don't worry. I'll wait. What do those changes, if I was to tell you I'd give you $100 for every 10 pounds you lose, you would do it, no questions asked, because you want the 100 right? But the question is, what does those changes have to do with the Holy Spirit? And I want, I, I want to stress this, right? Because a lot of times, right, it's not the Holy Ghost that, that can stop us or start us to doing anything. It's our own choices. We change or we make decisions based on our intensity for achieving certain goals. And I want you to get that. Look, she said, take that challenge. No, it's an example, right? Because you would make those changes to get that hundred dollars, right? But that has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. That has nothing to do with spirit. That has everything to do with you making a choice and you deciding to do it because that is your primary goal goal or your primary focus. And I want to lay on your hearts tonight that the problem is, is that living for God has not become a primary goal or focus in your life. A lot of times the things that we need to do, they are partially connected to the spirit, but they are not completely dependent on the spirit because I have the ability to change or transform the things that I need to change or transform outside of the work, come on, of the Holy Spirit. And the thing is, is that, that God's morals are not our morals. God's values are not our values. And the thing is, is that we don't, we don't, we don't take it seriously. We make satisfying ourselves in the moment the most important thing. And so tonight the question is, do you really have control over yourself? And if you go back, we, we, we discuss this. I try to hit on this at least once or twice a year because I want you to get this. When you start talking about purpose, when you start talking about reaching your goals, and, and, and making your dreams come to pass, right? You will never get there if you don't understand self-control. If you cannot discipline yourself to control yourself, you will never see the things that you want to do. In reality, right, in chasing how you feel and what you want, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, you end up getting nowhere and you end up going nowhere. I realized this, that chasing around how I felt only led me around the same mountain. I will go around and come right back to square one. Why am I going through the same thing? Why am I seeing the same things, right? God bless my money. God bless my money. God bless my money. Come right back to being broke. Paycheck to paycheck. God bless my life. God bless my life. God bless my life. Coming right back to the same problems, the same issues, the same challenges. And the thing is, is that I missed it 
Right. That in the end, because I didn't have self-control, my life ended up going nowhere. I was going in circles because I had no self-control. And I hope you can get that tonight. Right. That breaking the cycle begins. And look, I'm going to say it like this. If you want to see something different, you have to do something different. And a lot of times we are where we are because of the habits that we continue over the habits that we don't break, the things that we continue to indulge in. And I want to I want to ask you a question. How can God change something in your life if you keep doing the same things to bring your life to the same place? There is only so much that God can do when you don't do what you're supposed to do. And I want to stress that tonight because somebody's been praying for something. Somebody's been asking God to do something for them in their life. And I believe that God can do it. But guess what? It starts with you. And so tonight, I hope, man, I hope I left something with you and I'm done. I don't know how much time I got left. But the question tonight is, can you control yourself? If you cannot control yourself, I'm, I, I, I hate to tell you this, but the reality is, is you are going to always see the same old things if you keep doing the same old things. And so tonight, break the cycle. The breaking the cycle starts with learning self control. So thank you guys for tuning in tonight. That wasn't real heavy or real deep, but I hope, I hope, I hope that answers some of your prayers tonight. You got to learn to control yourself. So with that, thank you guys once again for tuning in. Be on the lookout for the things that we post. We do quotes. The ministry does quotes. I myself do quotes on my page on YouTube. Uh, 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 we do. We push, push it out videos on Instagram. We do quotes. We do uh, 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 inspirational uh, devotionals. We do all kinds of things on Twitter. Uh, go to our website. You'll be able to connect to all of that stuff. It's www.thegodmovement.com That'll connect you to all the different platforms that, that we're on. You can see all the different things that our ministry is doing, all the things that we stand for, what we're about. So, man, I, 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 man, I ask you, go check it out if you're interested. Uh, if you can, come to our service on Sunday mornings. It is a very short service, very impactful service. I guarantee you won't leave the same way that you came. We have a lot of good music, a lot of good singing. The atmosphere is nice. Our people are friendly and loving. I, I, I think it'll be a really good and enjoyable experience for you. So, if you can't make it, I'll see you again on Wednesday night. Once again, the website is www.thegodmovement.com. That'll connect you to all the different social media sites that we're on. I'm sorry about that. Tune in next week. If you can, man, share TGM's quote uh, uh, during the day. If you see it, share it if you can, man. I hopefully hope it will encourage you and hopefully it will hopefully it'll encourage somebody else. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm signing off tonight. Got to get up early for work and I got a little bit of work to do. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I will be doing a morning motivation on our YouTube channel. So be be sure to be on the lookout for that. If you haven't subscribed, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's called TGM Television. All right. The Instagram is the underscore God movement. And of course, you already on Facebook. Of course, you guys are already seeing us who are all on those platforms. So thank you once again. And you guys be blessed. Y'all have a good evening. Control yourself. <laughs> Control yourself. Good night.